All right, shalom and welcome to, what is this, class three? Class number three on the calendar. Hang on, I got two computers going at the same time. Uh, and we're going to continue tonight, you guys, with talking about the moon. Okay, so just if, if it seems redundant, it seems like this is, you know, we're talking about things a little too much. I'm trying to hammer this into you because this is a this is a point where people have a hard time understanding how to wreck in the moon. So we're going to we're going to keep doing this until um, we've got this down. OK, so let me start off with a prayer and then we'll go into what I have for you this evening. I'll be who here we are, Father, gathered in your mighty name of one mind and one accord. And we're here to learn your Shabbat, your calendar, your feast days of as we are approaching the seventh month. Help us, Father, tonight understand your calendar. Let your people see. Unseal it for them, Father. Help them to understand these days and how the moon reckons it and how your word confirms it. I ask this in your mighty name, Yehuzavu. Amen. All right, you guys. She's in a waiting room. I don't see a waiting room. Hold on, you guys. I'm, let me tell Courtney. I'll start this uh, video and get her settled. <laughs> Hang on. Sorry, you guys. Here we go. Understanding new moons and translation days. Time can only be measured by movement. Serious Humans moves. relate and measure time with reference to movement. The hands of a clock moving around a clock face describe hours, minutes, and seconds. Without movement, Brand time cannot be measured. This. The modern calendar is a solar calendar. On the modern calendar, weeks and months are not based on anything in nature. They are completely arbitrary. The Luni solar calendar, established by Yahweh at the creation of the world, is different. The calendar of creation is based entirely on nature. From its years to its months, from its weeks to its days, all is based on movement. The word month was originally moonth. It comes from the word moon. In ancient times, months were always based on the movement of the moon. Weeks, in turn, were divisions of the month or lunation. The Hebrew Sabaton was celebrated at intervals of seven days, corresponding with changes in the moon's phases. The biggest difference between Yahweh's luni solar calendar and the papal solar calendar in use today is found in the fact the months and weeks of the biblical calendar are also based on movement in nature. The modern calendar has months ranging in length from 28 days to 31 days. The months are not anchored to anything in nature. Consequently, the week cycles continuously and without interruption from one month to the next and from one year to the next. The Creator's calendar bases each month on the movement of the moon. Each month begins with the new moon. The week, a division of the month, restarts its cycle every new moon. The Hebrew month is a lunar month, and the quarter of this period, 
one phase of the moon, appears to have determined the week of seven days. This is the hardest point to comprehend when first beginning to study the calendar of creation. The modern solar calendar has a continuous weekly cycle. The calendar of creation does not. The Sabbath, depending in Israel's nomadic period upon the observation of the phases of the moon, could not, according to this view, be a fixed day. New moons are important to understand because the weekly cycle restarts for the new month at new moon. In scripture, new moon can refer to the first day of the new month, the period of time between one new moon and the next, a calendar month. Many people are confused over what to do on new moon or how to observe it since months on the Gregorian calendar are divorced from anything in nature. Scripture reveals several things about the observance of new moon. One, new moons were non-commerce days. Two, new moons were days of thanksgiving. And three, new moons were days of worship. Non-commerce days. When in apostasy, the Jews resented having to close their stores for Sabbaths and new moons. The Bible records the lament of these greedy merchants. When will the new moon be gone that we may sell corn, and the Sabbath that we may set forth wheat, making the ephah small and the shekel great, and falsifying the balances by deceit? Work done for the tabernacle, however, was allowable. The tabernacle of Moses was assembled on a new moon day. However, no work that generated income, no commerce was to be performed on new moon, nor any other routine labor that could be performed on other days. Days of Thanksgiving. New moons were a time for families to get together, share a meal, and rejoice over the blessings of the past month, rededicating themselves to Yahweh for the new. Worship Days Where scripture is silent, history can shed additional light. An early edition of the Universal Jewish Encyclopedia states that new moons were originally days for worship. The new moon is still, and the Sabbath originally was, dependent upon the lunar cycle. Both date back to the nomadic period of Israel. Originally, the new moon was celebrated in the same way as the Sabbath. Gradually, it became less important, while the Sabbath became more a day of religion and humanity, of religious meditation and instruction, of peace and delight of the soul. Translation days have no direct correlation in the modern solar calendar. However, it is necessary to understand what they are in order to have a clear comprehension of Yahweh's calendar. Translation day is an astronomical term not found in scripture. However, the fact the biblical months were based on the cycles of the moon is sufficient proof they exist in the biblical calendar. Astronomically, a lunation is 29.5 days long. A lunation never has less than 29 days or more than 30 days. Astronomers use the term translation day to designate the 30th day of a lunation. It falls at the end of a lunar cycle on the black moon 
when the moon cannot be seen. Time itself is continuous because it is, many have believed, the system by which time is calculated must also be continuous. This is incorrect. Originally, all ancient calendars were lunisolar with an interrupted weekly cycle. The weekly cycle restarted at the beginning of the month, lunation, or at the beginning of the year following five intercalated days that closed the previous year. These five intercalary days were not part of any weekly cycle. All time must be accounted for. Thus, translation days are not non-days. They have a date, the 30th of every 30-day month. The 30th of the month, like the first of the month, was not part of the seven-day weekly cycle. However, it was counted and did have a date. Confusion over translation days has led some people to reject the biblical lunisolar calendar. The fourth commandment clearly states, Six days shalt thou labor and do all thy work, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of Yahweh thy Elohim. Not understanding translation days had led to the false assumption that in a 30-day month, there are a total of eight days between the last Sabbath of one month and the next Sabbath of the new month. This appears to create a problem because eight days is no longer than the six workday interval between Sabbaths prescribed in the fourth commandment. However, because new moons are a type of holy day, there are never more than six workdays between worship days. The assumption there will be too many workdays between Sabbaths comes from not understanding the new moon itself is a worship day that starts a new cycle of four weeks. In the time of the earliest prophets, the new moon stood in the same line with another lunar observance, the Sabbath. The new moon begins the new weekly cycle for the new month, so translation days are not part of that weekly cycle, even though they are a day with a date. Translation days are always the 30th on a lunar month. They can never be transferred to the next month or counted as a date in the new month because the next month always starts with New Moon Day, the day following Translation Day. With the new moon, a new cycle of four weeks begins. Yahweh has always clearly specified by name or date which days are to be kept holy. Thus, all days not specifically designated as holy days are work days. The Gregorian solar calendar has different categories of days, weekdays, weekends when most people take off work, and national holidays. The biblical calendar has three categories of worship days. One, weekly, Seventh-day Sabbaths, two, monthly, new moons, three, annual, yearly feasts. Many people convicted to worship by the biblical calendar keep the weekly and yearly observances, but the monthly observance of new moon is frequently overlooked. This is partly through ignorance of how to observe the new moon. However, the importance of new moons can be seen in the fact the sacrifices prescribed for new moons were considerably more than those prescribed for the weekly Seventh-day Sabbath. The sacrifices required for the Seventh-day Sabbath were simply the two lambs offered every day plus two additional lambs and a small food and drink offering. 
the sacrifices for new moons included two young bullocks, a ram, and seven lambs, plus a sizable food and drink offering, plus the two lambs offered every day. Under the old covenant system of sacrifice, the priests burnt a morning and an evening sacrifice every single day. Yahweh specified which sacrifices were to be offered on which days. The average daily sacrifice was a lamb. Larger, more expensive sacrifices were offered on the yearly feasts. If days were to be ranked based on the type of sacrifice specified for that day, it would be from least to most important for everyday workdays, three, weekly seventh-day Sabbaths, two, new moons, one, annual feasts. All of creation was designed to reveal truths about the Creator and to draw the hearts and minds of man to his Creator in grateful acknowledgement. The calendar devised by Yah is divinely designed for that very thing. The seventh day weekly Sabbath is to be set apart for the worship of the Creator. But it was not just the weekly Sabbaths that were to be set apart. Originally, the monthly new moons, in addition to the yearly feasts, were all times to remember the goodness of the Creator. Yahweh's holy convocations, including new moons, are times for renewed commitment to the Creator and times to slow down acknowledge the Father's gifts of family, friends, and other blessings. New Moons brings a blessing to all who will set aside this time to acknowledge the blessings of Yahweh. This feast will be kept throughout all eternity as the saved rejoice in the endless blessings of the loving Creator. And it shall come to pass that from one new moon to another, and from one Sabbath to another, shall all flesh come to worship before me, saith Yahweh. All right, you guys. That was Understanding New Moons and Translation Days. Again. Don't want it. Well, I guess I am. I am being redundant. I have to. I, I almost lied to you there. I was intentionally being redundant. Okay, because this is how we learn repetition. All right. So we're going to be talking about how the moon is reckoned for the next couple of weeks before we move into uh, anything else about the uh, calendar. Welcome, everybody. Let me just first say I am sorry about the confusion last week. Shenanigans happening with my computer. The same thing. Tried to happen again this week. Uh, I was talking with the students before we recorded. So I'm letting you guys know now, you know, um, same guy I'm having problems with hacking, logged me out of my Zoom account, and changed the login information. Everything's been documented. I was able to get back in it and I had to, to uh, generate another link. So that's why the link was different for some of you that might've went to that other link. You have been in the waiting room. If you notice, you just come right in on this one. So, um, yeah, little changes. You guys be praying for me. Um, you know, the tax, what can you do, right? They want me to respond. I'm trying so hard just to walk away, but, you know, being provoked, I may end up suing. I'm just, you know, letting you guys know. <laughs> I, just, I don't know what else to do, okay? Uh, I'm not provoking anybody. I'm doing my thing. Somebody's mad that I'm teaching this calendar and that I expose that they are a thief and they're determined to keep messing with me. So keep me in prayer. All right. Anyway, we was able to get around that. Here we are in class. Welcome, everybody. I'm thankful that you was able to get here. Uh, so whatever you missed, I'll be posting this on YouTube. It wasn't but just a, a little bit of that video um, that you missed. So. On that note, talking about translation days and 
new moons and for that fact, full moons. Let's, let's just get to the bottom of that because there are some people that believe that the full moon is the head of the month. In other words, the, the word in Hebrew is Rosh Chodesh, right? Rosh Chodesh. Rosh Chodesh is head of the month, but it also means month, uh, moon, new moon, okay? So we have a couple of words here, new moon, full moon. Is that the same thing? Well, we're going to establish that right now. I'm going to take you to some scripture. Hang tight. i got to use my other computer to bring this up because I don't have this program on this new computer yet. So I got to uh, use my other computer, the one I do have it on. There we go. It runs a little slow. So we're talking about the new moon. In particular, the verse in Psalm 81, 3. Now in the English, I want you to notice something. This is, this is kind of why it's important always to go back to the Hebrew. Because sometimes the English can be misleading. Blow the trumpet in the new moon, comma, in the appointed time comma, on our solemn feast day. Now, in other translations, it says different. King James, it says, blow trumpet in uh, the new moon, comma, in the full moon, comma, and on the feast days, right? So it's given three days. Now, some proponents of the full moon is a new moon say, oh, no, 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 no. It's reiterating here. It's new moon and full moon is the same thing. It's reiterating. No. Let's look at the original Hebrew, okay? So if we go to that right here in the interlinear, we can see the use of the word b-kaseth, right? That's, that's the word I was telling you guys uh, the first class, which it means covering. Uh, King James has um, interpreted this word as covered in light, right? It means covered. Now, I personally believe it's a mistranslation. Right, because covered usually means you can't see it, which would be what the new moon is. In that case, this would be reiterating. But let, we're going with what King James has interpreted. Kaseth is in the full moon. Okay, the word Yerok is not here. Okay, because that's not what we're, what we're talking about. We're not talking about the moon as a subject. We're talking about the lunation, which means the full moon. Or no moon. Okay, we're distinguishing the two. So look, look at what we got here. But Kaseth is in the full moon, and Bechodesh in the new moon. It's two different words. Two different words used in the same verse tells you, period, it's two different moons. So if a full moon is full, and you can see it's covered in light, King James, then the only logical way we can interpret Bakodesh or Rosh Kodesh, which is the head of the month, as no moon. That's the translation day. The first visible crescent will be day one. Okay. Yes, she's here. Um, I'm going to take you to some something in a little bit to a printable solar lunar calendar, and you can go there and print out all the all the month and all the months and track. Every single month, step by step, and we're going to walk this out together this next coming year. I wanted to do with you this past year, but the sabbatical happened and all the chaos in my life, right? So I had to take a break from it. But starting at this new, this Abib that's coming up, which will be the head of the year. By the way, the seventh month is not Rosh, uh, Rosh Hashanah that the Jews are doing, head of the year. Not so. <laughs> it's in Abib, which will be. In a, in a couple of months to come still. So we're going to track how we establish the head of the year, which is done with the equinox, you guys. And it's the new moon closest to, not the new moon after. If you do the new moon after, um, 
you know, sometimes you could be a whole, you know, three weeks off on it, right? So it's the new moon closest to, so it could be a week after the new moon. Then we know that first one, that first new moon is the new year, okay? It's not the one after that. That's how some of the calendars have been different. I know in particular, Adam at Parable did the, did the after and not closest to, and he was, he was roughly, you know, almost a month off on that. And that was the time of the flood. So I'm just saying there's different interpretations, but we got to get it right. If we expect the pouring out of the blessing, just like in the upper room, because who has revealed to me, the key to this is one mind and one accord. And that's going to be in his name and in his calendar. When we're hitting his Shabbats, and it's and it's nearly a universal thing now with the Hebrews, and not such a, so much of the bickering and all the backstabbing that's going on. I mean, really, the audacity of some people who are trying to hack me because I'm teaching the calendar, and they call this from Babylon. That's an evil spirit, you guys, because I'm I'm proving this thing hands down with the scriptures alone, and you know some external resources that's done the work. But primarily the scriptures, I don't go outside of that with other books like Jubilees only, which is, that's bad. That's called bad hermeneutics, if you didn't know that, okay? We shouldn't do stuff like that. So looking at this word, new moon, or even if we went to moon, right? Because I want you to see the difference, because there are times in scripture where the word Yerok is used, which is the word for moon, it, okay? So Bakodesh or Rosh Kodesh is a synonym to new moon or head of the month. Okay, so we've just established the new moon is not full moon, which means you're going to see a first visible crescent after that conjunction. That is Rosh Kodesh. It is a synonym with the word month and moon or new moon. Does everybody understand that? But when we're speaking about the moon specifically as a topic, you, you who have created, created the sun, moon, and stars, guess what? Now we use the word Yerok because it's not a synonym. We're not using a synonym. I just wanted to say that to put to rest some of the argument, the ridiculous arguments that really don't understand what grammar is and the fact that we have synonyms in Hebrew as well because there was that same ones proposing Oh, uh, it's not Rosh Kodesh. That's not dealing with the moon. That means month. No, it's a synonym. It means month and new moon, period. Lesson over. Okay, so I want to show you the word moon. Let's just, so, so I got new moon up, right? So it's going to show me every place where new moon is used, starting in 1 Samuel and then uh, goes down to Colossians. But if I search just for the word moon, we're going to see everything from, hang on just a second, you guys. It's going to show us new moon and moon. A lot more, as you can see there. Give me a second here. Genesis. Behold, I have dreamed a dream more, and behold, the sun and the moon and the 11 stars made. Okay, so this is when Joseph is talking about his dream, right? Well, let's look at that, All right? And what is the word here? Let me make sure I'm in there. There it is. And the moon. So a shamish is uh, the sun. And then we see right next to that, Yurek, or Waf Yurek, and the moon, right? It is talking about the moon. The moon is the subject matter. And therefore, we're not, is, there's no use of a synonym. We're not specifically talking about the head of the month, which is also known as new moon. Everybody follow. All right, so you can see that same word used specifically when the moon, like in Deuteronomy 33, 14, when the moon is being spoke about 
specifically as a subject, right? We can see the word Europe. Or here we got here we got European specifically talking about months plural, right? So it's month and month, moon. The word month comes from the word moon. Understand this. Month was the word. So we got Yerakim as being used here to describe months. But again, we're not specifically talking about the head of the years or anything like that, right? Which would be uh, also a Rosh Chodesh, a head, head of the years. Head of the year, actually. A bead, which would be a bead. Not the seventh month, which is what the Jews are doing now. Everybody follow. So that is a really good um, resource there, the ISR. I'm going to try to get it over on this this other computer. Um, so I can use it here. Now I want to take you over to World's Last Chance. If you guys, this, this is a really good resource if you're learning the calendar, because there are some fakes out there, especially the ones that decided to get a name so close to uh, Troy's that it actually misleads you to another website that takes you in a 180 degree other direction where the full moon is the new moon. That's one of the main points over there. Don't do that. I'll show you uh, his in just a moment. But this is World Last Chance. And this is where you can go to print out this calendar. This is all you need right here. Why? Because every time the Bible or Yahuwah speaks about his Shabbat, it's going to be one of these days in your scriptures specifically it's never 18th or 17th or the 10th or yet it's a 10th for a feast but you know what i mean the seventh day shabbat is never one of those other days it is always 8 15 22 and 29 and most notably the 15th day that is given repetitively especially in the exodus this is how we can track what <laughs> what this that's a good teaching too is going to exodus 16 and seeing when they get to a lean 30 days after they leave Egypt, they left on the 15th that night. They get to Elim on the 15th. And who, what, what does he do? He gives them the Shabbat and the work week and the new moon, all that at, at this time. He, he's introducing them to his calendar. Okay. So for anyone who argues that the calendar started at creation, not for the people. Yahuwah gives it to the people at this point in Exodus. Okay. And this is how it works out. I mean, you can go do the math. They get there on the 16th, excuse me, the 15th. Yahuwah tells them that he's going to have them pick up manna for six days. And on the sixth day, collecting twice as much. And then they're going to rest on the seventh day. That happened on the 15th. You got There's no stretching in time. Yahuwah, it's very clear that this all happened at the same time. So what does that mean? Well, the first work day of this calendar that he was starting them on would be the 16th day of the month. That's math. So one, two, three, four, five, six days that they work and they collected twice as much on that day and rested on the 27th. And then what do they do for the next 40 years? This same pattern for 40 years, you guys, continuously. This is before. This is without any kind of interruption, any kind of you who are hiding it from, none of that kind of stuff. We can document and show from the scriptures. This is what they were doing. They're out in the desert. They're looking at the stars. You who is teaching them the calendar, not only not, not that, the whole story of the Maserat is being told in the stars. Okay. This is just one part of it, the clock part. But all of history is being spoken to us in the stars, you guys. The plan, if you will. So you could go here. If you look up at the top, worldslastchance.com forward slash printable hyphen lunish uh, uh, solar. You see another hyphen in there, solar. Just go to that right there and you can print out each. It'll have first month, second month, third month. Because you know why there's no such thing as a January, February, March, April, May. Just like there's no such thing as a Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. It's day one, day two, day three, day four, day five, day six, day seven. 
Same thing for the months. First month, second month. The reason why we got names of the month, that does come from Babylon, you guys. Many of those names, especially Tammuz, right? These are Babylonian words. So they're still used, um, but we definitely don't call the day of the weeks. You know, we don't call those by name. It's day one, day two, day three. And if by chance you're day one, day two, to day seven, eight, all line up with the Bulgarian calendar, that should be a red flag to you. That never happens on Yahuwah's calendar because there is motion, just like we saw in that video just a moment ago. There's motion involved, just like there's motion involved on a clock. It moves, okay? So we are watching a celestial clock happen above us every month, you guys. And the head of the month, Rosh Kodesh, is day one when the when the crescent is seen that evening and it could be a one or two day wait you guys that 30th day that you see down there right because it could be either 29 or 30 sometimes that's not there sometimes it's 29 days and it goes right into day one right here but sometimes you have another day of waiting so then you'll have a 30th day to that month that you're in, and then day one. This is quite frequently where the confusion happens and how we get extra days. If you don't reconcile this right, you'll, have, you, you'll end up with extra days toward the end of, of the year. My mustache is tickling my nose. My gosh, that's awful. Everybody follow me. You with me? Are you still there? <laughs> are we recording? Yes, we're recording. But you guys awake? Yep. All we're right, here. Very good. Any questions so far? Good. Okay, let's let's move on. I, okay, you've been talking in chat, so you guys are answering me there. I didn't see that. I'm sorry. <laughs> I th thank you for uh, for for utilizing that chat part, though. All right, so. Um, another thing I wanted to share with you from that site is this article here. And just what they got written here. Remember the Sabbath to keep it holy. Six days thou shalt labor and do all thy work, but in the seventh day is the Sabbath. This is Exodus 20. This is after 16. So he's reminding them again you know, by Exodus 20, and keeps doing this, by the way, reminding them, for the people wanting to obey the biblical, the Bible commandments, the question is, which is day one? All count to seven, but where does the count begin, and how can we know which is the true seventh day? The, cre the creator who made the, the week also designed the month in which to place that week. The calendar of creation begins with new moon day, followed by four complete weeks. Does everybody understand what we're just what we're talking about? Back to the calendar I was just showing you. We established the head of the month, which is new moon, not full moon. We've established that with scriptures, you guys. Don't go backwards, go forwards, okay? The new moon is when you cannot see it. It's called a translation day, and it can be one or two days. This is why it's important that we, at every head of the month, witness this, because we don't know if it's going to be one or two days. This is why it's hard to produce calendars a whole year in advance because each one of those new moons can be possibly one or two days. We don't know in advance what the moon's going to do. Only, only the Father does. By the way, this is what makes this so genius and why it can't be manipulated by man. All man can do is deceive you with words and going outside the Bible. But Yahuwah tells us in Psalm 104, 19, the moon tells you when, what, the Moedim happened. What is the Moedim? The Shabbats, the feast, and the head of the month, the new moons. The moon tells us, okay? So if we're not observing the moon, you're wrong, okay? Same ministry I've, I've been talking about here. I noticed last year, trumpets for them started at the 15th day of, of September. This year, they're doing it on the 21st. Both were the wrong moons. 
This one in particular is a waning gibbous. It does not look like a new moon nor a full moon. And let's just say the full moon was the head of the month. It's not a full moon. They're not observing the moon at all. A waning gibbous is the wrong moon. So if you're celebrating trumpets starting on the 21st of September, you're wrong right off the bat. It's the wrong moon. How do you know that? Because the Bible tells us the moon tells us when the Shabbats are, when the feasts are, and when the head of the month is. It's the moon. that. In other words, it's Yahuwah. He controls that. Would you agree? Man can't get up there and tinker with it and pack it up five minutes and all that kind of stuff. That's not what happened in Isaiah. When Yahuwah, you know, moved his clock a little bit, it was Yahuwah that did it. It wasn't Isaiah. Man can't touch it. And this is why he preserved his most special day, that one that happened in the upper room, Shavuot, in the gross cycle of wheat, because he knew that the devil was going to pervert that day, and he allowed it. He says he was going to do it because of their sin, and he allowed it to happen. But he also had a plan, you guys. It wasn't going to be completely erased. It was going to be preserved in the gross cycle of wheat. That is genius. And only the, the, the father of the universe would have thought of such a thing. I wasn't the first one to find this out. I wasn't the first one to see it. There were several others. My friend uh, Walter that I just met down in Florida has done, had known this for 30 years. You guys, 30 years? Oh, my gosh. And so there had to be others throughout history that knew agriculture, that were believers and could read the scriptures that were going, uh, wait a minute, something's not right here. Imagine what that did to their faith. They found a conundrum in the scriptures they could not reconcile. It probably tried and tested them to the, I'm not even kidding. Imagine a wheat farmer in Kansas somewhere in the 1800s reading his Bible, right? And he see. <laughs> And, and I'm sure at that time, they're, they're, they're Pentecost, which is 50 days. But there had to be a wheat farmer going somewhere. It ain't happening. There ain't no wheat. How are you doing that? It's, it's not at the right time. There had to be. I mean, I'm not a wheat farmer. I, I was in farming, and I've been around wheat fields and, and grain and all this kind of stuff. But I wasn't personally a farmer. I'm just observing. I read my scripture and observing. Just like when I drove across the country and I'm seeing wheat fields everywhere, multiple states. Not only that, it gives me a, an article from CNN the day before that Russia's dropping bombs in Ukraine in what? Wheat fields <clears throat> that look the same as the ones I was seeing all the way across the United States. <clears throat> Talk about confirmation, right? Observing. That's why he gave us the sun, moon, and stars, to observe. There's a difference between me walking into a room and me bowing down to my clock and worshiping the clock because I'm observing. Wouldn't you agree? So the simple fact that you observe the sun and the moon and the stars, because it, it takes all of this. Remember, we've got to reconcile the head of the year with the sun and the stars with the, with the equinox. It's not just about the moon. Now, that is a pagan calendar. If someone says they're on a lunar calendar. That is pagan. If you notice up here, it says loony solar because there's a big hand and a little hand, right? And there's faces of the clock, all the constellations. That, you know, and I don't know what your cosmology is. And I don't, I don't want to start no fires with anybody, but this is the creator's clock, okay? And it's telling us something. Genesis 1 tells us that he created it for signs and seasons and for communication. This is what I was saying earlier in the class. He's telling us a story. All of creation is written in the stars, you guys. Have you ever heard of um, uh, E.W. Bullinger, the gospel in the stars, salvation message? It's all written there. But not only that, everything is. Every, everybody is. I don't want to go into that too much, but it's true. You're part of that. He has everything is in motion in this cosmic clock that is our universe, even, you know, however you look at the cosmology. 
enough of that. So he says, let there be lights in the firmament of the heaven to divide the day from the night and let them be for signs and for seasons. Page 4150, religious gatherings and for days and years, two great lights were set in the firmament of heaven to rule over the day and over the night. Genesis 1 through 1, 14, 16, and 18. Time can be measured by movement. The revolution of the sun measures a day. In 360 and a quarter days, the sun returns to the relative same position above the earth. This is one solar year. The moon's 29 and a half day cycle measures a lunation, which is the basis of a month. 12 and a third lunations are the same length as a solar year. And there are three basic calendar formats that use the movements of the sun and the moon. We have the solar calendar. That is the Gregarian. And this is what Hillel, some 325 years after Yeshua, participated in changing the calendar. It was fixed. And it was even later than that that it was changed to a Gregarian calendar, you guys. That's still at that point, it was a Julian. Okay. But even so, that day was fixed to a Saturday. So it didn't matter if it was an eight day or a seven day week, meaning Julian or Gregarian, that day was fixed 325 years after Yeshua. Okay. Which means their day one lines up with Monday, or excuse me, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, those all those days. So it doesn't matter if you call it day one, day two, day three, and your little delusion, if it falls on Saturday, it is not right, period. The moon determines the Moedim. That's what the word says. And just like our sister was saying a few minutes ago, she's getting to the point where she can go outside and look and know when the Shabbat is. That's the whole point, you guys. It's supposed to be that easy, and it will get to the point, you know, especially like Walter, 30 years. Can you imagine following the clock for 30 years? That means that you could walk outside any day of the month and see that moon and know exactly what day it is, right? Just like riding a bicycle. It's that easy. Even children were able to do this in ancient times, you guys. They didn't have, you know, TikTok and PlayStation and all that kind of stuff, or TV. Guess what they had? The stars, that's what they had. And so everybody knew the clock. This is why most, most um, cultures did everything by the moon, planting, all this kind of stuff, all right? So it is what it is. You have created it for that purpose. So again, we got the lunar calendar. Lunar calendars are based on strictly on the cycles of the moon, months, which begins at the first dawn of after conjunction, cycle continuously without adjustment to the solar year. Because 12 blue nations are 11 days shorter than a solar year. See what happens when, you know, here, here's, here's the other direction. So, so they're shorter 11 days. But if you don't account for the translation days and just blow through them, guess what you get on the other end? About a 10 or 11 day uh, not a deficit. What do you call it? When you got more, right? It happens just the opposite. It's because they don't reckon that moon correct. Okay. So this is what the writer is saying in Jubilees. Let's put that to rest. Understand what the writer's writing about. The lunar solar. The sun and the moon function together to make the lunar solar calendar. Lunations are adjusted to the longer solar year by adding a 13th month seven times in a 19 year period, this cycle. The weekly cycle restarts with every new moon. Each lunation has four complete weeks. The calendar established at creation is lunar, lunar solar and is the most accurate and precise of all timekeeping systems. In scripture, each lunation starts with the celebration of a special worship day. Does you, you guys know what the Jews are doing here in this seventh month? Let me get a drink. Oh, I had to drink some tea. At Rosh Hashanah, what do they do? Two witnesses go out and they blow the shofar at the first visible crescent, right? By the way, we can go ahead and tell you when, when this is on the calendar. If, say, this is September, we're talking about this time right here. The 25th, 26th is, is 
24, 25th, 26th, around that area. I got to look at it a little closer, but that's when we're looking for the, the moon to go black and then looking for the first visible crescent. This will be the beginning of Rosh Chodesh, the new moon for the seventh month. Okay. That's happening around here. All right. So what, what are the Jews doing when they see the first fit? They blow the shofar. Did you guys know that that's actually supposed to happen every month, not just in the seventh month? They just so happen to keep it then because they've declared that to be the head of the year, Rosh Hashanah, blowing the shofar, right? We're supposed to blow the shofar every new moon, and we're supposed to have a, a little feast. We're supposed to have a dinner. We're supposed to worship on that day and praise on that day. We're not supposed to do any kind of servile work and, and change money, but you can do work, right? It's just none of that commerce, all right? So it's sort of like a preparation day during the feast time where you can cook and do things around your house and stuff, but you're not supposed to go earn a paycheck, okay? That's, that's a, a different kind of Shabbat. All right, so where was I at? New moon day starts with the first dawn after the astronomical year. The moon is also known as conjunction. Six work days follow, and then a seventh day Sabbath on an eighth day of the month. You see that? That's because we, we hold that day back. It's not counted with the week, you guys. We have to understand that. Day one, the head of the month, will establish, and here's, an, here's a little trick too. If day one happens, and let's say uh, on, on the calendar is Thursday. If day one happens on a Thursday, right, it's gonna set, it's gonna set the days for the month. And you can figure that out. So when that when that happens or when conjunction is, and then you got day one. Now we've established when the Shabbat is gonna be for the rest of the month on the Gregarian. On Yahuwah's calendar, it will always be 8, 15, 22, and 29. So it's going to take you a little while to get to that point. But this is a way that you can rec reconcile both simultaneously if you have to live on that Babylonian calendar. It'll, it'll get to that point where it's a second nature. Does everybody understand what I'm just saying? There'll come a point where you'll be able to see when that new moon happens on a Tuesday or Thursday or a Wednesday that you'll be able to know when the Shabbat is for the whole month based on that day. Is everybody follow? Good. Very good. 8, 15, 22, 29. The scripture is very clear. All right. Three more weeks follow ending the 29th. Uh, through measurement and calculation in the, in the days leading up to the 29th, the time of conjunction is revealed so one can determine if the month has 29 or 30 days. Right? Down here. No month ever has more than 30 days. And you know that that happens on the Gregarian a couple times of the year. You got 31 days. No regard to the moon at all. Okay. Which kind of throws a wrench in the Jews because sometimes they have to, to look at the moon. Um, uh, Purim is one of those times because this happens at a full moon time because the 15th was always a Shabbat. And in the text, and this is in Esther 9, you guys, where we see three consecutive days that is a Shabbat, the 13th, 14th, and 15th. They, they add the 13th and 14th to commemorate Purim. This is the three-day uh, uh, Shabbat, the only time of the year it happens. But the 15th day was always the Shabbat. Look at it in the text. The two days before added, right? So three consecutive days. Now, sometimes for the Jews, when they don't reconcile the calendar, they have to do an intercalation specifically for Purim because it has to fall on that full moon on the 15th. I find that really interesting. Whenever you got to do stuff like that and you got to manipulate and move things around, um, that, that's a little suspicious. It's always determined by the moon. All of Yahuwah's feasts, all of his Shabbats, even um, at the time of Shavuot, this happens when there's no moon. It's, a, it's new moon time. It's not a full moon. But every feast has something to do with the moon, you guys. Watch what happens at Sukkot time. We're going we're gonna to have a full moon there. Same thing happens at Passover. The moon plays a role. So if we're not observing the moon at all, we're just doing it, you know, doing it your way, like Burger King. Is that, is that Burger King's uh, 
motto, your way right away. Yeah, that's the Burger King method, doing it your way. That's not what the scripture says. It says be obedient to his word. We're supposed to, not just, I mean, to the T, attention to detail. It's very important to details, you guys. We can't just blow through it willy-nilly and, and think we're going to skip by, especially after you've been told the truth, you guys. That's when chastening comes, okay? There's no innocence from ignorance, right? When you know the truth and you do your, your way anyway, that's when chastening, that's when the chaos comes for you. It's because you're always trying to tell you something. Just I'm just stating the obvious, you guys. All right? So this resource, again, Here's World's Last Chance. I would encourage you guys to go over there and um, check it out. But the other one I wanted to share with you is Troy's. You know, this one can be a little tricky based on how you put this in your um, search because there's another website that is very similar called the Creator's Calendar. That's not Troy. That's going to be somebody else, and it's going to take you in another direction. Okay, so don't get misled by that this is what his looks like and it's simply www.creationcalendar.com i will have a link when this is put on youtube i will have a link down at the bottom for you uh, for those that are watching this where you can find it you can always come back to the video and um, find it so lots of links over here you guys i would encourage if you're hungry to know the scripture i mean to um yeah to know what the scripture says about the calendar, but specifically the calendar. This is a good resource over here. All these links to these PDFs are, are downloadable and printable and all those kinds of things. And for the most part, we'll answer any argument or any kind of question about um, the calendar. And this is what I appreciate about someone who specializes. Okay, it's just not some schmo on YouTube just pulling things out of the wind. Okay, this guy's done the work. He's got it laid out for you. It's very easy. It's like, you know, if you got a heart problem, you, you wouldn't go see, you know, a gynecologist to work on your heart. You want somebody that specializes on the heart, right? So <laughs> just logic. This is what he does. And I appreciate that about him. It's sort of like what I do. I mean, when you want to, when you want to hear about codes, you go to somebody that does codes. Okay. So he's already got it laid out. And so I don't mind using his resources and plugging him because he's done the work, you guys. He deserves the respect. And it's solid. I mean, I've, when I've gone through it and you cross-reference and you look at it yourself, you can see the truth there. Okay? So uh, so in that respect, I want to take you over to something um, really interesting. Speaking about the seventh-day Sabbath, I want to um, pose a little par um, not a parable, a little riddle to you. How can we get seven days of a battle at Jericho without any Shabbat? How, how would this happen? That's, that's kind of um, an interesting little riddle to figure out. But it's very, it's very telling in, in the importance of knowing about the moon, okay? Because there's a simple answer to it, you guys. And I've seen people stump at this. They can't figure it out, right? They say, well, there's no, there's no, I mean, there was obviously a Shabbat. There's no, nothing against walking. Well, it's a little more than walking. They were engaged in battle for seven continu continuous days. It's not just walking. They're, they got a sword in one hand and a shofar in another, and it's about to go down, okay? So they're engaged in battle. This is not, this is not uh, just walking. Okay, Israel walked around Jericho one time on the first day and one time each on the days two through six and then seven times on the seventh day. You see the conundrum? How is this possible? Are we breaking the Shabbat here? Absolutely not. There's a simple answer. And that answer is they started on New Moon Day. That's the secret of the Battle of Jericho, you guys, if you're trying to reconcile, how is this possible? And this has stumped people for a long time. Really, when it, because they had no concept of a new moon. But when someone with, with that knowledge comes along, it's like, ah, I know what's happening here. New moon day. 
It's a non-commerce day. It's a worship day. But you can work. And you can go to battle. Israel marched around Jericho one time on the first day and one time each day on the days two through six and seven times on day seven. Every able-bodied Israelite was dressed for battle and they carried with them every weapon at their disposal and even carried with them into battle the sacred Ark of the Covenant. This was a seven-day battle, siege, really, which begs the question, which day was the Sabbath? Okay. This is also going to establish the, the eighth of the month is the Sabbath, right? The first or the second or third, fourth, fifth, and sixth day was the Sabbath. The seventh day was the Sabbath. Israel didn't march around Jericho on the Sabbath. It does, it does not matter which day was the Sabbath. Israel was obeying who was by marching around Jericho, and we don't have enough evidence to determine which day was the Sabbath. These are all the arguments that, that people would commonly say because they can't come up with the answer. But if we look at that calendar, again, did it, trans did it transition over? Yes, it did. Thank you, Father. All right. So this is when they started. They won. It's not a Sabbath. It's a worship day. And that's basically what they're doing, right? Worship. When they proceed with the Ark of the Covenant and they got the Levites out there and they got shofars, they're blowing. It's a form of worship. That's what we're supposed to do at New Moon Day, guys, is blow the shofar. It's a form of worship. I don't know if you understood that. And it's a very powerful form of worship. In the spirit realm, it commands. Did you know that? Heaven will dispatch angels at the command of a shofar. It's true. Demons have to flee at the sound of the shofar. This is the voice of the Most High. This is what they heard when Yahuwah spoke to them at Sinai, was shofar blasts. Okay? So they started on the first day of the month, which was after new moon. It's new moon day. So day one through day six. So this is six, seventh with the new moon day, that they were in battle. One through seven. Seven days of battle. And then on the seventh day of the week, the eighth day of the month, we got a Shabbat. And that is the answer to Joshua's seven-day battle without a Shabbat. I find that really interesting and compelling uh, uh, evidence, you guys. No other calendar can they do this. And, and we're not taking any weak uh, answers that we saw over here. You know, it doesn't matter which day the Sabbath was. Oh, yes, it does matter. He doesn't break his, he doesn't break his Torah. He doesn't break his Shabbat. Sabbaths matter. And if you're not observing them and you know the truth, he, he, he will chase it. That generally will happen. Because it's a very serious subject, and he takes it very seriously. This is a critical point in the end times, you guys. This is where he's going to get us reconciled all together, is his calendar and his name. This is why it's so important, right? So I just wanted to share that with you. Um, let's go to questions. So enough enough on the, on the moon or new moon. I think I've hammered it enough. You guys understanding what I'm, what I'm uh, putting down for you? On the new moon, on the translation days, have we established that moon, new moon is not full moon? That's another moon. Cassette. Covered in light, as King James has declared. Right? I agree, Carrie. I agree. Just, if you want to look at it, let's, let's take the number 144,000 as a baseline and say the average of families is five. So we're talking seven, roughly 750,000 people, Hebrews, worldwide, or maybe more than that, maybe, maybe a million. Some families might have 10, right? Just, just general numbers here. First of all, that is a narrow comparative to Christianity, to Judaism, and to Islam. 
the scattered or the woke ones from the nations is going to be roughly, I think, personally, just from baseline numbers, somewhere around the million. And then in those, you're going to have basically, you know, five or six different ways people are keeping the Shabbat, right? He's going to reconcile that. I don't know how, and I can't imagine it because it seems like a mountain that we can't climb based on what I'm seeing with, you know, how, you know, some people are just so prideful and full of ego that when you, you put down 40 facts, they still can't see it. They, they, they want to, you know, but Jubilees, but Jubilees, right? I'm sorry. I can't accept that. The scriptures are really clear. Every time the, the, the Shabbat is mentioned, it's based on 8, 15, 22, and 29. And I've been able to see seven months laid out in seven different months, laid out in the scriptures, where, you know, you can't have seven months of a 12-year cycle on a Gregorian calendar or a Julian calendar, or any of them, that where you'll end up with 8, 15, 22, 29 consecutively. That doesn't happen, you guys. It only happens on the solar lunar calendar, period. Never happens on the Gregarian. This is why it floats all over the place. Sometimes it's going to be a Thursday. Sometimes it's a Friday. Sometimes it is Saturday. Sometimes it's Sunday. Why? Because the Gregarian does not recognize Yahuwah's clock. It's fixed. So this is why, the, you know, one year they're celebrating, you know, Yom Turah. September 15th, and this year they're doing it September 21st. Two, first of all, two different moons in those two experiences and two different days, right? Shouldn't it be this 20, if, it's, if you're going to do that, wouldn't it be the 21st every year? No, well, we're missing something. We're not observing the motion of something. What, what, what would that be? The moon. You're trying to fix these days, and it's not lining up with the moon. The moon determines the Moedim, period. And if we go outside of that, we're, we're defying him. Especially when you've been presented with, with um, you know, the evidence, and then we just, just, well, it's just convenient to me to do it Saturday. Right. No, that, that's not. That's not acceptable to him. It's, it's his day. The, these are the times where he pours out his he opens the windows of heaven and pours out blessings on these days. Not chaos. If you have chaos at Passover time, something's wrong. It's not chaotic. It's a beautiful experience. If you have any kind of catastrophe at Passover, any one of the feasts, I would question that because you would, he encamps angels around you. Nothing's going to happen. You hear what I'm saying? You are Israel in the camp of Israel is protected in obedience. <clears throat> but if you outside of that and you're doing your own thing, that's when I mean I would expect those things to happen. And it would it doesn't shock me when I see it. Just right off the top of my head, I'm thinking about the flood that happened with a big group at Passover time. That's a chastening, you guys, and I'm not coming down on, I love them people, okay? The father loves them. Nobody was killed, but a lot of damage was done, a lot of money lost. That's the kind of thing that you, if, if, there should not be chaos because there's angels encamped around you. When you're keeping his feast, you're keeping his Shabbat, he's not going to let anything happen to you. That's a fact, you guys. That is a fact. He, he protects you. So just something to think about. Um, everybody understand that, that, that the new moon coming up is just a few days away, actually, less than a week. <clears throat> about a week. We got about a week for new moon time. And I've seen some of you got some new shofars, right? I got to buy a new one. I left mine in Oregon. <laughs> and I've done that. I've done that several times. I've left particularly... My shofar in, in like three different times. So whoever gets it, it's like I, uh, Jonathan leaves a piece of himself. <laughs> so I got to get another one. Anyway, that's coming up. And, and uh, there's 
different ways that people observe trumpets. Some just keep it very simply, blowing the shofar a day, <clears throat> right? Some even have a meal. Um, you know, I don't think there's a wrong way. As long as you're observing it, I guess you can make it wrong and be on the wrong day. But, you know, if you're trying, it's okay to have a dinner. Some people have been asking me, is it okay to have it? Yeah, absolutely. I think it's actually said in the text to have a meal, um, if I'm not mistaken, right? But the thing is, blowing that shofar. Then we have 10 days of awe, or a 10-day count, and then um, Yom Kippur, which is generally a fast, okay? 24-hour uh, fast. Yes, this next one coming up is Yom Tura. The Jews call it Rosh Hashanah, which means head of the month, uh, excuse me, head of the year. Okay, that's not what it is. This is, this is another man-made tradition by Judah. Judah did that. Abib is the head of the year. So they're blowing shofars at this particular time and only at this particular time, but we are supposed to do it every month at new moon time. It says blow the shofar at new moon. And the full moon. So we're supposed to do it at full moon too. But in particularly the head of the month, it's it's a it's a festival. It's a it's like a big dinner. And we're giving thanks and we're worshiping and um you know, it's, it's generally a good time. I enjoy it. And it's always beautiful to watch the sundown looking for that crescent moon. It got me into watching sundowns all the time, <laughs> which is the most beautiful thing I've ever experience they're always so different it's like you would paint you a picture personally in the sky so that's coming up in roughly about a week so we're going to start looking around the 24th 25th we should go be going into translation day or conjunction when there's no moon and then we're looking for that first visible crescent everybody follow then we count to 10 that's Yom Kippur and then five days later is my favorite, which is Sukkot, which is another seven-day feast and a wonderful time of the year. I'm probably going to be down in Florida, you guys. I don't know if I'm going to be able to swing two different Sukkots. Um, there are people wanting me to come up to the Northeast. And then there's some that I've committed to come down in um, Florida. <clears throat> so um, I'm probably going to have to plan something else for the Northeast and just come up there to do a speaking or something. Yeah. I just can't. That's more than a thousand miles of drive, you know. So if I stay three days in one and go, you know, a few days to the next, that's thousand miles or more drive to both. Anyway, this will be done. You guys got any questions on tonight's um, topic or teaching? Everybody follow? Was I was I clear? I have one question. Okay, yep. so the Shabbat, the 8th, the 16th, the 24th, and the 29th, right? So those are Shabbats. No. Or, and then it's, the new moon is after? No. The Shabbats are always the 8th, 15th, 22, and 29th. Every month. Yeah. It'll never change. Every month it's so, the same. It's on, it's on you who's counting the same. So the days that that the we don't we don't do any work for money would is only like every other month kind of yeah, well it's every head of the month it's every new moon day every new moon day which is going to be the head of the month it's going to be the first day of the month not, and that's not a work day so the work day the first work day is going to be day two you see this is how day eight is the shabbat because we have to reconcile that new moon time, which could be a one or two days. So it's really critical that we get that right, because if we, if we just blow through that at the end of the year, you'll end up with like 10 days extra on your count. You'll, just, you'll be off and be like, how did we get off? That's how, because we just blew right through the moons. It is a set apart day. The Bible is very clear about that. Okay. It, it's another day. So if we got new moon days, work days and Shabbats. Those are the three days the Bible lays out, okay? And the Shabbat is always the 8, 15, 22, and 29 on Yahuwah's calendar. It's going to be different days on the Gregarian, but I, what I was saying in the, in the teaching is there are times where you can know, let's say it happened on a Thursday that the new moon was seen, 
based on that day, you could know when the Shabbat is for the whole month. You don't have to go and look for the moon. The moon is just a confirmation at that point. Is that, is that understood? So, you know, let's say we see the new moon. You're breaking up. Go ahead. I, what I'm trying to think here um, is you said that we, a new moon day, that we can work, but not paid for work. So that, does that include the 29th or no, it's just the next day for. The 29th is not going to be the first day of the month. That's going to be, that's going to be when we can't see a moon. The next day. Oh, okay. That yeah. It will never. Okay. The first day will never be the 29th day. In other words, it'll be, it'll, it'll, it'll be a 30 day at the end of that previous month. Right. If we have to go another day, it'll be day 30. It's not day one at that point. It's day 30. It can never go past day 30. OK, so yeah. it can be at either one day or two day new moon. This is why we have to go every month with in ancient times. It was two witnesses that Rosh Hashanah for the Jews. It's only in the seventh month, but that goes every month. You guys, two witnesses go out for, of every family and, and witness the moon. And say, okay, now we know when the Shabbat is going to be for the whole month. Okay. And you can get to the point yeah. where based on the Gregorian, no matter what, if it's a Wednesday or Friday or Thursday, when you see that new moon, you know when it is on the Gregorian. We already know that it's 8, 15, 22, 29 on Yahuwah's calendar every month. It never changes. It's perfect. Yeah. It's perfect like that. But it only changes on a Gregorian. So what my reason why I'm saying that is because some people... They try to reconcile both at the same time, and they can't do it simultaneously. And they'll get confused. But if you reconcile the moon first and let the moon tell you when it's going to be, it's going to float on the Gregarian because the Gregarian has fixed days. Yahuwah's calendar never floats, only when you have to reconcile it with a Gregarian. And this is why some people keep Yom Turah on the 15th some year and 21st on some year. It, it's going all over the place. Okay. So yeah. that's how we do it. Now that particular day, sister, is a non it's a non-commerce day, which means you can you can work, do farm work, do housework, you know, things like that, but not go to work and get a paycheck. Okay, so it's kind of like a Shabbat, but not. Does that make sense? Yeah, that day was the next day. Right. Yeah. If, if you, if we, if, if the moon is visible after 29 days in that day, and there's only 29 days in that previous month, day one is the next day that when we, at the end of the crest, yeah. at the end of the day, we see the crest. That is day one. We just went through day one. Okay. Now we won't know, listen, we won't know. It could yeah. be if, if we're at the 29th day and we're, and we don't know if it's going to be day 30 or day one yet. Right. We have to see the crescent to know that because what if we go day 30? Now we're in two days of no moon. You see where I'm going? Then that next day is automatically day one. Yep. Does that make sense? It's automatically day one. So let's yep. back up back at the 29th day again. We go that second day. Okay. So it's potentially one or two days. We go that next night. If we don't see it on the 29th, we know that it has to be on the 30th. But if we do see it on the 29th, there is no 30. It's day one. Everybody understand? Okay. Yes. Marty, you got a question? Yes. Um, okay. So the 29th is a uh, dark moon, correct? That's correct. And mm -hmm. then the new moon is at the sighting of the crescent, the sliver crescent, correct? Yes. That's it. That is the end of day, day one. one. Yes. yes, end of day one. All right, perfect. Mm -hmm. Now, I do have a question on um, when you were saying that it's kind of like a Sabbath, but uh, we can do work and stuff, but we can't get paid for it. That also includes we're not supposed to go like grocery shopping and stuff too, correct? No, that's not considered work. That's like preparation. Yeah, oh, so, well, so yeah you can go grocery. Go oh, well, okay. oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah, no, no grocery shopping. Because it can't buy things. That that is exactly. true. Exactly. That's what I was thinking. 
I'm okay. thinking about the then, feast. There are times at the feast, especially around Passover, where you're in the feast period, but you can do that. You can go shopping and, and prepare and, and all those kinds of things. Um, right. Yeah. Um, and it's so just, no usually comments. done at night, too, by the way. It's not during, during the day. Right. So no commerce, right? No commerce. No, no. You can right. after sundown. After right. sundown, then you can. Does that make sense? Yes, I've done that before, actually. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and then the last thing, Jonathan, can you go over uh, Yon Torah when, when we'll know when it is again? Okay, I know you so said on the Gregarian, it's, yes. let me pull up, let me pull up um, this calendar. We're going to look at um, this as if it was a Gregarian, okay? But this is the, the lunar solar. All right, say this is, this is the month we're in right now. Um, today is the 19th, okay? So we're, we're looking around the 24th, 25th, 26th, somewhere around there. I gotta, I, I could go, I guess yes. I could go be very specific. Uh, well, on World's Last Chance, it says the 25th. Yeah, so that's, that's when we're looking. And, and you know, right. if, we, if we're following the moon now, you're seeing it go down, right? Uh, the 21st is going to be what's called a waxing or excuse me, a waning uh, gibbous. And so it's still kind of got some girth on it. So we're waiting for that to come down to a reverse crescent, reverse of what we're going to see, which is going to be like this. This is the one, you know, it goes kind of in the opposite direction before the new moon. it will be the right. opposite. And it will be an opposite part of the sky too. So um, we wait till we can't see no moon. And then we start watching through that. So it's, it's not like we just start watching on the 24th. I would be watching now and kind of getting getting into the rhythm of, of trying to see that moon. It, you know, and I know that, that, that certain it's going to be later at night. But if you can in some months where you can afford to do that, try to look at the moon every night. So you can get it. An, and it, it'll be different hours of the, of the night. Every night it'll be a different hour. So it's a little inconvenient for those that go to bed at 7 and stuff like that. Because there's some nights you got to be out there at 11 or 12 or when it gets further along, like toward when it's waning out, we're talking three in the morning, four in the morning, right before sun up. Right. So um, it's different every night. And for ancient people who were under the stars all night long, they're sleeping under the stars. It didn't take nothing to kind of wake up and look, you know, oh, I see it. Right. They could do that. It's a little more inconvenient for us. We got to get up and get dressed and go outside and all that kind of. There might be trees in the way or buildings in the way, you know. Okay, not well. ideal. <laughs> yeah. So, but you can get a general idea where where the moon phase is, what it looks like going into new moon and coming out of new moon. So it's the it's a life and death cycle. It's a life and death of the moon or man, um, if you want to look at it that way. We are born from nothing and we grow to fullness and then we wane in our later years to back to nothing again back to the soil right that's kind of what what i see with this moon cycle it does not make any sense to start at fullness right because first of all just to get to that point that they two or you know two days before two days after you go try that look at the moon for those four days five days it almost looks the same every night it's a little difficult especially when you get closer to it and we're talking one percent and two percent um right uh, right it's it's a little different uh, difficult so it doesn't make any sense I, to start the month then it can be confusing to people they if you know if they start then yeah it's right it's to, like a birth and a rebirth this is what you know exactly right. a birth that's of a the birth moon and, and a rebirth yeah every month the moon is renewed it's a renewal this is what translation day is. It's a renewal. And we go, we, the cycle begins and starts all over. Yeah. And then one last thing, this world's last chance calendar. Mm -hmm. I have, I have for this month being on a Sunday and this it, is it, it might have been depending on who you were, you know, who cited it and, and where they were, because there's, there's 24 hour periods all, all around the world. And so People are going to be seeing it at different times. Um, and then, you know, every month, uh, one of the websites is tracking where it's being seen first. And that kind of, by the way, we haven't talked about this yet. This is going to be further in, in the calendar. We're talking about man's dateline. 
you know, that's in between Hawaii and, and um, Australia, right? Man's Dateline. Yahuwah's Dateline moves every month to a different, <laughs> to a different um, uh, time zone, if you will, the 24 that goes all around the world. It's just 24 hours in a day. It moves each month. It's in, it's in a different spot. It moves. And so there's a website that we use, um, Sighted Moon. I can't remember what it, what it is. Sighted Moon, something like that, where uh, people post when they see it. And you'll see that, that trend happen, that, that it'll be a different place in the time zones each month, okay? Which is uh -huh. kind of interesting. Yahuwah's time zone dateline moves. Man is fixed. And this was all done for commerce, by the way. Even fixing the, the, the calendar to a Saturday was done for money, basically. It made it more convenient for merchants, especially Jewish merchants. And I don't mean to sound racist or anything like that. That's just a fact, okay? Um, this was an incentive. And, and there's even scripture where the, the uh, video we watched where it's, it says there, that they're basically crying out, when can we sell corn and wheat and, and you know, they don't want to observe Yahuwah Shabbat when it happens. They want to have it fixed so they can plan around and they can, you know, make money. It's the same thing today. And you'll hear people say that I can't get on that calendar, man. I got a nine to five. Yeah, I know. But I've also seen people who were determined and hungry to get on Yahuwah's calendar that made it work. They went to their boss. They learned the calendar. They knew how to ask off for Mondays or Fridays or Wednesdays a month ahead of time because they learned to calculate the calendar and they made it work. You guys, they didn't have to have every Friday or Saturday and all that off because that's when people know it. And by the way, there are letters on this website somewhere where you can print that out and take it to your boss. Sort of like we did for the COVID thing for the exemption. Um, there are law, there are labor laws that are in place that you, you have a religious exemption, okay, and that you, that can't you can't be discriminated because you keep a Sabbath, right? That that goes for more than just Saturday, because there 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 are people that do do it this way. Well, there had to be provision for that under these statutes and these laws. So somebody made a letter, so you can actually take it to your boss or whatever. And be like, look, this is my, I'm Hebrew. This is my Sabbath. It, it goes by the moon. And by, and by the way, add the caveat, I'm not a Christian. So my Sabbath is not Sunday. This usually goes off better with, with employers. You're like, oh, because they're not dealing with a Christian now. So you, 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 can, you can work around it. Now, I'm not saying it, all employers are going to be like that. There are probably going to be some that are really hard on you, you know, but I think you wouldn't knows where you are knows where everybody is, and he'll make a way. If you are hungry for it and you're praying for it, he'll make a way, especially if you're praying to keep his Sabbat. Absolutely. Don't you know he's going to move in a mighty way? So don't throw that up automatically, you know, just because it seems inconvenient. Let you will work. If, if it's something that you really want to pursue and you want to walk it out and see a change in your life, you guys, where things start going right, and doors opening and, and others closing, but it's like clockwork, no pun intended. It's because, you know, well, look at the blessings and the curses. He says, if you're obedient, A, B, and C is going to happen. He tells us right there. So if we're obedient and keeping his Shabbat the way the Bible has shown us, guys, I saw a difference in my life. Protection, provision. I don't have a nine to five and I don't know what I'm going to bring in month to month. You guys, I mean, I don't have a school right now. Okay. So who moves on people and he knows when I'm in need and he'll send the provisions and it's all, it's just me praying. Right. Now there's sometimes I have to put the word out and ask people, you know, to, to help, but he's never let me down. He's always provided and he's made a way for me to do this. Now, I know many of you got, you know, real jobs, so to speak. Like this is not a real job, being a teacher on YouTube for 13 years. Some of you go work in hospitals as a nurse. So that's a little different, right? You, you got to deal with administration and all that kind of stuff. But let you who will make a way. Pray about it. He'll make a way. He'll open it up. And he'll, he'll let you be a light where you are. 
people would be like, what? You're not a Christian? Tell me more. What's this, what's this Shabbat thing? Are you Jewish? You're not Jewish? What? 12 tribes. Just watch the doors open up on this thing. This is what I love about his name. The, some of the shirts that I got with his name on, just walking out in public. And people, was, I'm, <laughs> I'm not even kidding you. I took my sister to go get a pair of shoes at one of the sporting goods stores in Columbia. And I had the name shirt and seat seat on. And it, it immediately started conversations as I'm walking down the aisle. I see guys were double taken. One guy come up to me, shook my hand. He's like, hey, are, are you Jewish? I was like, no, man, I follow Yeshua. And he was like, oh, really? Do you keep the 613 laws? Boy, we was for 20 minutes, I'm sitting here talking to his schooling on what it is to walk in Torah and how we're not in bondage and all this kind of stuff. And he was engaged and he was interested and he wanted to know more. So you never know what he was going to do, you know, as far as sharing your life, but you got to be bold and willing to go, you guys. And so it starts with this kind of thing here. Don't be intimidated by employers in this calendar. He will open the door. Just give him a chance. You guys got any more questions? I see the chat going up, and I'm not watching that. Now I can see it. Any more questions? We've gone about an hour and 40 minutes, you guys, so I'm going to wrap it up right here, and we will meet again. Now, this will be the same link this time, this, this next week. Um, I made sure I have took some precautions on any kind of confusion for next week but if in doubt you can always go back to that video save that video somewhere you can you could use that that link over and over again all right you guys good you learned something tonight i want to thank you for joining me and um giving me the opportunity to share this information with you and you know this is very special for me um i i know this is critical to the father and it is an honor for me to to be teaching and be amongst those that teach um, this calendar. And I know in everything in my being that this is right and that this is a critical point, that this is where he's going to meet us in the upper room experience that when he pours out his spirit. Okay. So we got to get it down and we can't be lackadaisical and, you know, egotistical and all these other things where people don't want to budge. They want to, they don't want to look at the information. They want to go with what their heart tells them or you know, what Jubilee says and, and not consider the scriptures at all. So um, thank you for considering this teaching and this opportunity to, um, to study the word with me. So let me pray and uh, we'll see you guys in the next class. And uh, thank you, Marty, for saying that. Let me pray for you guys. I'll be who I'm just so thankful, Father, for each and every one here and everyone that's watching and for this opportunity to teach your calendar, Abba, I pray that you would open up the eyes of your people, especially your people, Abba. Let them, let them finally see your Shabbat and let them come to it with boldness, Father, and meet you there. Pour out your spirit upon them, Father, and let them see with clear spiritual eyes the truth that is in your calendar and your Shabbat. Father, go with them this week. Keep them safe from the enemy. Dispatch your angels around them. Keep them safe. Bring them back at the appointed time. We ask this in Yeshua's name. Amen. All right, you guys. I love you. Thank you for uh, being in class with me. We'll see you in the next one.